Hi, it's Emma and welcome back to another edition of my newsletter. Thank you again so much for all the positive feedback, emails, the people that have come in and said positive things about how much me sharing my self-care practices has helped, been a good reminder, given you some ideas. I'm probably going to end up thanking you all every single newsletter because I just work with such lovely people that are so grateful and believe me, that never gets old to me. I love hearing that. That is such positive feedback. So thank you so much for that. Today, I have something different for you, but something I hope is equally as helpful. Today, I am sharing with you the books and resources that have helped me along my journey. And we are starting way back in the 90s. We're going way back to when I was in high school. So we're going to jump in. First, I've got them all over here around me, so I'll be moving things around. First book, and I actually found the original book, Being Happy by Andrew Matthews. I came across this when I was about 15 or maybe 16 years old. It's written for adults, but it's a nice, simple book, it's, and it's broken up with cartoons. Here's an illustrator as well. And just goes over those basic concepts of goal setting, you know, what you think about, you attract into your life. And it was a really, it was just a really good way of get, getting that message across to me at a fairly young age. So that book, I actually have another copy because I thought I'd lost it at one stage. I've looked at other books Andrew's written. I haven't liked them as much. I think this one was his first and in my opinion, it was his best. All right, we're going to fast forward to university. I read lots of different books. I especially liked books of Proverbs when I was in university, and I found one, and it's probably out of print. I still have it at home. It's called A Light Heart Lives Long. It's a book of Proverbs from around the world. But this book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, it was in a much more um, low-key kind of cover. It was a white cover, and I'd underlined bits of text that had helped me. I think I lent it to someone and never got it back. So this is an updated um, revised and updated edition. There are concepts in this book that I still think about to this day that are helpful to me. So I highly recommend this. Um, very, very good. Uh, Susan Jeffers took this concept and expanded it into other books. I think there's one called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway in Your Relationships. Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway at Work. She, you know, she took it and went further with it. I think this one's the best. Feel the fear and do it anyway, the original book. All right, so we're through university. We are now into my 20s. This book came into my life. You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Brilliant book, but just text-based, normal-based, yeah? Then a dear friend gave it to me in this version where it's all illustrated, beautiful pages, just a delight. This is from when I used to keep them in the office for people to buy. We don't do that anymore. You'll have to get it online. But if you do, make sure you get it in this cover. I don't even know how to summarize this book. It is life-changing and it helped me so much. There are some beautiful, beautiful affirmations in here. In fact, there's one that you find right at the center of the book. Here it is. So it covers two pages. I went through a stage um, early 2000s of saying that every day for maybe about a year. Wow, it is a way to start the day, I can tell you. If you're interested in being more positive, deliberately focusing your mind in a positive way, have a look at this book. Like I said, make sure it's worth the extra few dollars to get this version. Now, it also comes with a companion book, which are exercises to work through. So it will ask you things like, you know, in your childhood, how did you perceive men? Growing up, how did you perceive women? Now, I worked through that. I worked through the entire book in my early 20s. I was reluctant to write on it because it was so beautiful like this one. So I just got a lined post-it note, dated it, and then wrote down my response. Worked through, through the whole thing. It was incredibly helpful. Stored it away with all my journals. And then maybe about four or five years ago, I thought, well, maybe I'll work through it again, you know, now being older. And I started to, but I found that I actually didn't need to. I'd, I'd healed or I'd worked through enough that it wasn't as relevant anymore, but it was well worth doing it once. So have a look at this one. If you're interested, have a look at the companion, which has a very similar cover. You could probably buy them as a set. 
well worth a read, well worth a look at. All right, so we're through 20s, aren't we? We're now into 30s. So in my 30s, self-care. Self-care, self-care, look after yourself, take care of yourself. What have I done with it? What have I done with it? Here it is. The Art of Extreme Self-Care, Cheryl Richardson. Again, quite a beautiful book. There's been some effort put into this book. Beautiful pages, beautiful styling. It's just got a really nice quality to the, to the pages. But most importantly, the information inside, really good. It gives you a starting point for how to actually take care of yourself. You know how lots of people say, take care of yourself? Well, how? This book will give you some ideas on that. A beautiful book and it really helped me. And I think I worked through, I read it in its entirety and then I worked through some of the chapters at the pace of one a month because there's some exercises and things in there. I didn't approach the whole book in that manner, but I did digest some of it quite slowly. So again, highly recommend this. And a few friends bought this based on my recommendation. A few therapist friends, right? They, and they enjoyed it. All right, I also got into an author in my 30s called Sark. Susan Ariel Rainbow Kennedy. Unusual, isn't it? Her books are unusual too. They are basically handwritten and include some of them. I don't know if this one does. They include some of her art and things like that. For a while, I really got into her books and I really liked them. There's a whole range of them. I think I probably grew a little bit past them. But if I had to pick one or two, this, which is one of her more recent ones, Glad No Matter What, Transforming Loss and Change into Gift and Opportunity. Don't we all need to do that a bit more often? Gives you some ideas on that one. And then one of her very early ones, and I think I had to buy this secondhand. It was the only way I could get it. Inspiration Sandwich. I think it was out of print. And again... Kind of that. Not for everyone, not for everyone, but if you if you like that kind of creative, quirky author, suck. Now a couple of poems I wanted to mention to you. Autobiography in five short chapters by Portia Nelson. It's a one-pager, you can Google it and find it. It's also called There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. If you have ever made a significant change in your life, if you have ever taken responsibility for something that was going on that you had more power over than you've realized, this is the poem for you. Take two minutes and Google it now. It is so, so good. So have a look at that one. The other one, coming into my 40s, I wanted a mantra. I wanted a philosophy for my 40s. I was about 39 when I came across this. It's called I'm a Woman of Distinction. Now be careful because there are lots of poems I've since found out called I'm a Woman of Distinction. To find it, Google I'm a Woman of Distinction and you will feel me when I walk into a room. That's the final line of this poem. It's quite long. But it's really good. iPad because I wanted to mention a couple of ebooks, audiobooks. Rebecca Weller wrote a book called Happier Hour, maybe three, four years ago now. I have recommended it to lots of people who struggle with alcohol, are addicted to alcohol, want to change their relationship with alcohol. I read it and found it very personally helpful. Alcohol was not my main drug of choice, food was, but I will be honest, there were times in my life, probably between my late 20s and early 30s, when alcohol crept in a bit more than I was comfortable with. I was certainly having a glass of wine with dinner every night, pretty much. And it was just, I remember once having to go on antibiotics for 10 days and feeling a bit like, oh, no, I'm missing out. And that registered a little bit up here like, hmm, am I like, maybe this is a little bit dysfunctional. So happy hour, Beckweller. Uh, side note, by the way, I um, changed my relationship with alcohol before I read that book, but it helped solidify some of the concepts and ways I was thinking. And it's been a very helpful resource to recommend to other people. Another one that's been mentioned to me that I haven't had a chance to look at yet is called The Joy of Being Sober. Apparently it's a little bit more of a confronting read than Happier Hour, 
but it's still a good book and it's one I intend to get to. Last recommendation, an author called Pema Chodron. P-E-M-A, Chodron is C-H-O-D-E, no, D-R-E-N, Pema Chodron. Um, came across Pema Chodron when I was looking for meditation teachers because I've been into meditation a long time and all the wonderful apps that we have now didn't exist back then. So Pema Chodron came across her as a meditation teacher and about four or five years ago, I got an audio book from the library called Places That Scare You and it was narrated by her and it was wonderful. Just recently, I remembered about her and I renewed my Audible subscription and I got a copy of an earlier book called When Things Fall Apart and I'm about halfway through. It's not as good as Places That Scare You. Now she's written lots of books and my recommendation is to pick something that's more recent. So perhaps from 2000 onwards. Places That Scare You was 2001 and the one I'm listening to now that I don't think is quite as good was 96. So I think probably as she's gotten more experienced, she's just gotten better with how she presents things. Look, it's still good and I'm gonna finish it, but I think Places That Scare You is better. Um, and then I'll have a look at more recent books after that. I'll follow her through sort of a timeline. So I hope this is helpful for you. Of course, I don't have any affiliation with any of these publishers or authors. These are just books that have helped me along the journey and that I've recommended to people. If they're at all helpful to you or to people you love, then great. That's the purpose of this. Um, I do want to mention just quickly that I am working through until Christmas Eve this year because I want to. That's what I want to do. There are still a few appointments left for December. If you want a December appointment, please let me know by SMS or email. Let's not play phone tag. Let's get in touch the quick and easy way. I hope you're doing really well. I will see you all at your next appointment. You take care and I'll see you soon.